I cannot, I could not see you. What's good with you? Nothing much. Chilling. So Elijah, were you there when uh Supreme came to true school? Yep, I was there. Okay, perfect. This is awesome. We're gonna set off this true knowledge Wednesday in a great way. We appreciate everyone who's been tuning in with our True School online broadcast and our virtual sessions that we've been putting together. You know, due to everything that's been happening, we've just really made a conscious effort to keep our staff and keep our team and our youth and our alumni engaged and try to keep the communication and the spirits up, the motivation up. You know, a lot of high school students and community members that we interface with and that we serve, you know, this is a challenging time to try to figure out a lot of uncertainties, you know, and so not just as a business entity, not just as a community organization, but just as the family, right? Just as us trying to figure it out, we said, let's shift and let's put our efforts towards still being able to deliver what we do in a really impactful way. Um, so we kicked off our virtual sessions two days a week. True Knowledge Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Central Time every week. Art of Coping on Fridays at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Central. And that's every week. So we want to thank everybody who has been tuning in so far and supporting it. We want to say tag a friend, invite your people, um, because we get a lot of great feedback so far, but we just getting started. So who knows where it could go. We appreciate all of the suggestions, all of the uh, interactions, all of the people that's helped us so far just kick it off and get it off the ground because we've had some great interaction and even last week uh, our true knowledge session was incredible we had some legends on the line um, and and I mean we started talking about some really serious timely topics which is what we use true knowledge for at our after school session it's kind of the glue where students are able to come in and talk about current events process different things together uh, we bring in community experts, community leaders that offer different network of resource and opportunity to the young people that we serve. So it's not just a true school experience that they get. They get to learn and get knowledge of a lot of great organizations doing a lot of great things, a lot of individuals who have their back, who want to see them win. And, and we understand that that's a really important part of it. Um, students age out of true school and they look for other opportunities. Some of those opportunities they learned about at True Knowledge Wednesday. Right, and one of those opportunities, ironically, specifically, is public allies. A lot of our students, after they may age out of true school, they enter into what they learn about at true school through True Knowledge Wednesdays, which is one of the programs that come in and say, hey, this is an opportunity for you after high school where you can still hone your leadership skills. You can still get your, your, your social leadership skills together and get paid while doing it. Find your lane in activism, find your lane in service. This is a great way to do it. So. Our guest today, um, I would like to not only introduce as a public ally alumni, because I think that's significant, but also um, a real friend of True School now, right? We got friends of True School, then we got real friends of True School. It's, it's, it's a distinction that is fun and important for us because we have a lot of history and we've been putting in a lot of work for a long time. And the brother I have on the line has been there with us from the jump. And before that, so I want to welcome the True Knowledge Wednesday for the Supreme Omakunde. Y'all make sure that we make our guests feel welcome. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts or ideas, just let it roll because we're going to get into some good Q&A and interaction. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's good to be here. Good to be with True School as always. Um, I've been a fan of True School like its entire existence. I remember when uh, True School, I first went to Elements in uh, Cincinnati, and um, uh, my man Islord, Shah's son, um, mm -hmm. used to do some programming at, at, uh, at Elements. And um, I remember being there, just seeing everything that they had, and I was like, oh man, we could do something like this in Milwaukee. And I remember I came back, and it was around the time True School was kicking off, and I was like, well, well we got it. Well, let me be a part of it. Yes, sir. And so um, I did everything I could to be a part of True School, just to be around it and the energy and the fact that that the elements of hip hop are weaved into social justice and teaching young people. Um, it's really what I wish we would have had when I was younger coming up um, because hip hop ingrained itself into my life and weaved itself through my life so much. Um, and just looking at the maturation of hip hop and how 
it, it takes us to different levels in our lives. And I just really appreciate being here and being a part of True School. Man, well, you know, you, you put in a lot of insight and brought your own experience to help encourage and support the organization. We truly appreciate that. I just acknowledge that. You know what I mean? The whole team appreciates that from, from way back, as you said. And then even nowadays, you know, coming full circle and saying, hey, you know what? I want to work with True School and in a new capacity. Talk to us about your role at uh, Citizen Action. You know, like, but even before that, all right, mm-hmm. you know, your, your mother is a congresswoman, Honorable Gwen Moore. You know, big shout out, much love to the mama, the queen mama, Gwen Moore. Um, you know, you come from a background that's not everybody's typical experience. So, like, what, did you always know you was going to get into politics? Did you always know you were going to be that son that would, that would keep the legacy moving? Um, were you reared into it? Were you trained into it? And then talk to that, like, how that led to where you are right now. Right. Okay. So I knocked on my first door for political candidate when I was eight years old. Um, that was that was for my mom. Um, I really just wanted to know what she did all day when she was running for state assembly. Um, and I knocked on doors. She made me do my own doors. And I, I was always around politics. Um, I grew up in on the near west side in 1200 block of 25th Street. We used to gather at this cooperative uh, bar restaurant called The Interlude. And we used to talk about how much we uh, disapproved of Ronald Reagan. Um, and so I always grew up around political people. My father was pretty active as well. We used to talk about Pan-Africanism. We used to talk about um, uh, Chicago and their politics, et cetera. So it was always around, around the house. Uh, my mother reluctantly got, in, got into politics because she didn't want to do it at first either. Um, she ran, and I, so I became around it even that much more from the age of eight on up. And then um, growing up, people always asked me when it was my turn to run for office, and I always said never uh, because I'd seen the dark side to, uh, to this life. And so as I tell people, I was running away from it. Um, one day I tripped and fell, and it caught me. And so here I am. I, I, um, I represent the neighborhood I grew up in. So on my worst day of being an elected official, I get to represent the block in the neighborhood that I grew up in. And it's always an honor to uh, serve people. You put up with a lot of stuff as an elected official, but you, do, you put up with all of that for the honor of being able to do the work with people. And so um, I'm here and I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad that the people of the 10th County District just sent me back to the courthouse to work on, well, we're not at the courthouse uh, any, right now, but they sent me back on their behalf, so I appreciate that. Hmm. And uh, just getting into what I do with uh, Citizen Action of Wisconsin. Uh, with Citizen Action of Wisconsin, um, I'm what's known as the Bright Futures Organizer. And when we talk about Bright Futures, we're talking about the Bright Futures of our young people. And specifically, we talk about substance use disorder or drug addiction, et cetera. Um, we have, I, I got some statistics that I'm gonna show a little bit later. Um, and we have had a ma- major increase in opioid, o- opioid overdoses in the state of Wisconsin, almost like 600 years in a 16 year span. And what we wanna do is make sure that we are taking uh, the opioid crisis and knowing it as a crisis and addressing it, however, addressing all of the other factors as well. We wanna make sure that we're not creating a school to prison pipeline because many of our black and brown young people have been experiencing that for years. You know, the opioid crisis came along and it was affecting uh, largely wealthier, more suburban, whiter students. And so then it became more of a crisis. But we know that um, a lot of young people have been facing the school to prison pipeline where you get caught with a second bag of weed and you're on your way to prison. So we wanted to deal with a method that was less punitive for our young people to help them identify um, substance use disorder, however, to also help them identify it and help them to deal with it in a way that wasn't going to punish them. Like, oh, we caught you with something, now we're sending you to jail. How do we address the challenge that is substance use disorder? Um, And so that was one of the challenges that I was um, embarked with. So we have this um, this, this uh, peer-reviewed, expert-studied uh, program called Esper, Screening, Brief, Intervention, and Referral to Treatment. And we want to make sure that it's not just another punitive approach to how we deal with substance use disorder. And so I was brought on to Citizen Action to deal with that, to work with students, work with organizations like yourself, and work with the Department of Health Services in the state of Wisconsin to see 
uh, what legislation that we could offer to uh, to help us in this effort. Boom. All right. Well, he was running that. So okay. now listen. Yes, sir. Let's back it up. So okay. now if we talk into um, our youngsters and we want them to know what Citizens Action Wisconsin is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the functionalities. And you were brought on to help do the outreach and implement that. What is Citizen Action Wisconsin? Let's talk about that. How can, you know, if I'm a citizen of Wisconsin and I need some, act, what, how does that work with community, resident, citizen support? What is it? How do people interact with that organization? So Citizen Action of Wisconsin is a uh, healthcare organization. In, in, in its essence, it's a healthcare organization where we do advocacy um, on behalf of healthcare and on behalf of, of the healthcare people all over, the, all over Wisconsin. We're also, we have a co-op organizing model where we organize, you get a number of people who are gathered and they pay into uh, like a pot and they can, they can pay for their own organizer in their own, in their own area. We mm -hmm. have co-op organizers in southwestern Wisconsin. We have one in southeastern Wisconsin. We have one in northwestern Wisconsin. We have one in like central Wisconsin near like Wausau in that area as well. So we have several co-op organizers and then we have programs that deal with uh, politics, that deal with the uh, uh, movement politics, like if there are certain people who want to run for office or see themselves um, as a candidate that fits in well with our, our issues and the things that we talk about. Uh, we support candidates um, who are running for office as well. And we also uh, are doing what's called the race class narrative project right now, where it's one thing to talk about race. It's another thing to talk about class. However, to have both a both and narrative to talk about race and class, especially for um, folks who live in the wider areas of our state. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they're often, race is often used as the wedge issue for uh, whiter folks in our area who may not be as financially secure as other whiter people. And so, so hold on, hold on, hold on. I, just want, I want you to bag this up. I love yes, the way you're running it. I love the way right. you're running it. Remember, when, like, just like when you came to true school, right? Like me and you could build at rapid rates for a long time. Right. And the true school, you know, so, you know, we, we talking to teenagers, 14, 15, 16. It's a very interesting distinction you made. If you're talking to a youngster right fast, like, let's just slow that down and say, OK, race, class. All right, Mr. Supreme, what's the difference? Why, what, what's, why, why do I have to make a distinction if we're talking about these realities here? OK, I'll break it down this way. Um, if you look at uh, the United States, a lot of times if you look at the system of oppression, in the United States, a lot of times the face of our oppressor has been a white face. So if you're a non-white person, a black or brown person, and you see the face of oppression, um, it's always been somebody who was white. And so you view oppression connected to race. However, if you live somewhere like in the Caribbean or on the continent of Africa, the face of oppression may look just like yours. So then you have to say, well, maybe it's not a race thing. Maybe it's something else. So a lot of times it's a class, uh, a class issue, like one group of individuals having more money and having more access to resources than another individual. And the reason that I talk about the race class narrative with citizen action is because a lot of times people who don't have more in common with another group of people who may not necessarily look like them are always are oftentimes race is used as a wedge issue. You actually have a lot in common, but because one group is white and one group is black or brown, we're going to say that this is your difference and it's so different that you can't focus on the things that make you alike. So that's a critical point that I think people are definitely considering differently in these times um, and just considering deeper. And, you know, I just, I just want to make that Make that distinction also because these definitions are important, you know, as, as we right. bring it down to hip hop terms, as we bring it down to youth terms, let's bring it down to also these simple terms that they can understand. So I appreciate that. And then, so keep going. How does that play into this tool? And we talked about the opioid crisis. That's, that's right. what came in. So this opioid right. crisis and how people relate this to race, class. Um, geographically in Milwaukee, people might think, well, hey, that's that opioid. Well, that's not something we have a problem with, with our young people. You know, it's, it's a lot of misconceptions about what these, again, definitions actually even are. 
what the facts are and what the public misconception may be a lot about, about a lot of things. So how does it all relate? Okay, so I'm glad you asked that because um, we have our, our partners at Community Catalyst. Um, their perspective was, okay, we're talking about the opioid crisis and their funders were wanted to talk about the opioid crisis because it was attacking um, uh, largely suburban whiter people. So when it comes to uh, who we're addressing this a problem this problem for or who who is helping us to bring attention to it it's largely more suburban wealthier whiter kids and um now that we're bringing that attention and we know that it's killing people like two and a half people die a day from opioid overdose in the state of wisconsin since um 2016. and we know that it's it, two and a half people yeah well half right. All right, I, I'm not, all right, sorry, Statistically, all right, go ahead. It's, it's like two and a half people. So two people every day, at least two every day, are dying from overdoses. And most of those people become addicted to uh, opioids before they turn 18. And so we saw it as an opportunity to talk about mm. all the you know, um, substance use disorder. Because even if somebody starts drinking early, and um, they start doing other things earlier before they turn 18, um, it can lead into this pattern of substance use disorder. And uh, one of the things that we talked about um, with the, the, the young people brought to my attention at True School was that um, substance use disorder is just a result of, of underlying issues, things like uh, mental health challenges and things like trying to cope with other things, peer pressure, et cetera. Um, the fact that, you know, you could be in pain and, and dealing with something. So you go to the cabinet and get some of those pills. And then all of a sudden you realize that you're, you're, you're still constantly in pain and you take more and more of these pills to the point that you could become addicted. But getting back to your point, I want to make sure that we're talking about what happens with certain students and certain young people as opposed to others. You got a lot of black and brown young people that are in public schools all over the country. Mm -hmm. They have substance use disorder challenges. The solution is always, okay, well, find out who's selling or who ha is supplying it, lock them up, and that solves the problem. When in fact, we know that that doesn't happen. That, that doesn't solve the problem because there are many individuals who still have underlying uh, substance use disorder challenges. Individuals still have mental health uh, challenges that they're going through, and they're going to attempt to self-medicate in some way, shape, or form. So the thing is, how do we get to those underlying issues? How do we connect um, substance use disorder and suspension rates? And how do we make sure that we are in our schools adopting a less punitive approach that says, if you're a student and you're having this challenge, that we are going to support you and not just incarcerate you? And, and that was one of the really key things that made sense to us in the conversation, right? And, and we're going to get into why did it even make sense to come to True School. You could have chose any organization, uh, or was that the protocol, or was that something that you say, you know what, um, I'm going to talk to the young people to get, a, get ahead of this thing rather than come behind it and try to deliver them something. But, you know, to talk a little bit about um, your approach and, like, communicating to us that, hey, this is a model that has worked in other places, mm -hmm. and we may have a unique version of this model that could work in our community. And so that led you to us. So um, let's talk about that and, and, and sort of like, you know, your experience. Once you came to True School and talked about this screening, brief intervention and referral treatment program or tool, um, what were some of the students' reaction? And was it what you expected? You know, it, was it helpful? And, and uh, where can we go with it? Right. Okay. So first and foremost, excuse me. First and foremost, um, my response, because I've been talking, because uh, the first part of what we did with Espert was we were trying to get a budget amendment in the state budget for $2 million um, to, to have, uh, take some money so we can supply nurses in every school, in all the school districts in the state of Wisconsin um, to, to get them to help do these screenings um, for our young people. And it was a whole, you know, nurses instead of cops kind of effort. Um, and because you have to go to some schools and you go 
by the nurse's office and it's no longer a nurse's office. They have a police officer there where the nurse used to be. And so we were doing a tour around the state because we were getting ready for the Joint Finance Committee's road show where they would be going to different parts of the state to talk about uh, what they were going to do in the state budget and hearing the state budget. So we wanted people to testify saying, we want a less punitive approach to substance use disorder. Can you do something in Medicare or Medicaid and Medicaid expansion or, or use this piece of, uh, of our budget amendment to, to address those things? Now, fortunately for us, um, our budget amendment made in, into the governor's budget, but unfortunately due to politics, it was removed. Um, or it was dropped down significantly significantly where it couldn't cover the amount that we wanted to cover. So then we went into a phase of, well, we need to make sure that students aren't just being acted upon, that they are a part of the process. And so we started contacting uh, school principals, school nurses, uh, and trying to meet with them. And my perspective was, we need to have some young people that are involved in this process. We don't want them just being acted upon. So what's the, like, the, let, let me talk to this legal group of people. And if they can't do it, what's like the dopest group of young people that I can think of in the city of Milwaukee right now? And I said, let me go and see what True School is on. And, um, and so I just went back into my bag of, of, of those that I knew and the things that I had experienced. I said, let me see what True School is on and let me um, pull them into this project and um, see what they can offer me. And now when I got to True School, I was amazed because uh, just the fact that young people were already in tune with certain um, surveys, because Esper, a lot of times it comes in a survey form um, where you can just talk about different things. And the young people are like, yeah, we take those surveys already. Hmm. So what are you going to do with our information once you get those surveys? Are you just going to use it? You're going to data mine us and, and, and find out and track us, so on and so forth. And one of the conversations I had with NPS was, making sure that you're not taking that data and then using it later to punish young people as well. And so their thing was, yeah, we've done that. We're interested. If it's, if you're not going to take our data and use it against us later, if you're going to take the information that we have and actually use it to benefit us and actually get those help who actually need it, then um, it's something that we're with. But they were like, yeah, we're not, we're not just going to sit here and let you come in and tell us anything. Um, so there were a lot of questions, a lot of great dialogue, and um, they wanted to take it back to not just substance use disorder, they wanted to take it back to the mental health challenges as well. So I thought that was magnificent. Mm. Man, and, and you know, I think that's one of the approaches that a lot of groups that have maybe great initiatives and ideas end up missing that part of, you know, the, as you put it, um, uh, what was the phrase you used? Um, you didn't say attacking, what did you say? Um, uh, coming at the youth. Yeah, uh, acted upon. Acted upon the youth. Yeah. Um, and, and to point where it's uh, really a one-sided, really unfortunate outcome, because it could have been an opportunity, you know, and so what, what you all are doing in terms of taking the opportunity to get the young people's input directly ahead of time and making it matter, and having those real conversations, because you came back more than once, and it, and it was in our plan is still to continue the dialogue, continue the exchange, mm -hmm. get um, a nice cohort that could really help to refine the messaging, that mm -hmm. can help to refine the delivery to their peers, because that's what it's really about, uh, uh, that peer-to-peer -peer education. It's right. really strong at, at True School collaboration and the peer-to-peer -peer sharing and the peer-to-peer -peer uplifting, um, uh, because we know that they will communicate and direct ways and subtle ways with each other before we'll ever get wind of what may be an issue or what may be a challenge or um, something that needs some um, intervention or a referral to that matter. So also giving them the tools is part of that true knowledge and part of that art of coping. So in this time of stay home, stay safe, in this time of uh, 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 you know, uh, unseen threat, if you will, that people are really uncertain about and hearing different information about every day on the news, every day social media, every day from the government, local. It's just like so much where um, this can really spin out of control for a lot of parents, you know, a lot of young people. Um, mm -hmm. And to your point about 
being able to have the tools early so we don't develop the wrong habits, we don't start developing the wrong dependencies, um, is something that we're really intentional about at True School. So as we develop what this virtual conversation looks like, you know, let's just stay on top of it. Let's let's stay thinking about how we can um, keep the conversation accessible to the young people in terms of this tool and figure out how we can mold it even virtually, how we can continue the conversation because I think it's super important and I think we are off to a great start. I was going to say was off, but you know, continuing what we, the work that we put in and still um, cultivating those seeds that were planted when you came to True School. Um, right. Elijah, Elijah, you still on the line? I see we got um, a couple of our True School students on the line, but ain't no telling what they're doing right now. They just turn their cameras off. So um, Mahala's on the line. Um, Mahala or Elijah, if you are still there, uh, check in. I just got a yes. question. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, Elijah. Thank you, man. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Elijah, you happen to be at True School on one of the True Knowledge Wednesdays where Supreme came in. Um, just talked a little bit about the Sabrit intervention, uh, preventative service. Talked a little bit about Wisconsin Action. You remember those? You remember that session? I think so. You came to a couple of different sessions with uh, Art of Coping. You were meditating. You were stretching you know a lot of the mental health aspects of what we do at, yeah. at true school um so talk to a little bit about uh to me a little bit about like during this time during the stay at home and just the adjustment you've been going through like how you've been holding on and different things you've been doing to maintain your own um level head and just mental health and balance um so basically um you said sleep so no, <laughs> not sleep. <laughs> no, um, I do meditate on the time. Um, I probably do like um, every once, every once, two weeks. You no, know, um, I do if I like if like if I'm gonna have like a panic attack or something like that. Like I'm trying to, I just like I play I play music. Like that's that's like that's my number one thing. Music that. Helps me stay calm and everything. It just brings a positive vibe to my mind. Everything. So um painting, painting uh also helps. So as drawing, um I read a lot too. So books and everything, you know. Just just have fun. You just have you just need to have fun with it, I should say. I mean, like you, like a, a lot of people, like a lot of youth that I talk to, like man, this is so boring. I mean, well, you need to make it fun. You need to make it fun. I mean, we in a pandemic right now. Nobody, you really can't even go outside. So, my view, you know, what I'm saying, just have fun now. Do something. That's real. That's that's the best. It's the best commentary I heard all day in the pandemic. <laughs> Got to make it fun. Um, and even on a level of bringing something very serious, like a preventative, um, you know, referral treatment, screening, intervent, like those words in itself is serious. But bringing it to true school, we wanted to take the load off of it and say, okay, if a young person is struggling with something, what's the best way to approach that? What's the best way to have that conversation, right? So Elijah, just on the level of like some of your peers, if you think some of your peers are having issues and they may be dipping and dabbling in things, maybe experimenting, maybe saying, hey, um, Elijah, you know, you wanna come with us and try this? You know, um, what, what sort of things have you experienced and what sort of things do you think may be needed in terms of that messaging for that, that intervention or that referral to treatment if a young person going through it they will let you know what kind of messaging or conversation should we have about uh, referring them to re treatment or some screening um hmm. so like as far as something like that um Usually, usually, if I see anybody going through it, like it, it, it could be somebody that I don't know. Like you could just see it by the way they talk, the way they walk. Mm -hmm. If if I 
I like literally, I'll come up, watch you, and ask you how your day is going. All right? And if they say, well, good or not good, I, I, I keep talking to them until they still what's going out, with like, what's, what's, what's wrong with them, how, like, how, how, how they're coping with everything. And once they tell me what's going on, I'm like, well, do you want to do this? I mean, we can get you help and everything. That's, that's, that's how I do it. That's, that's, that's how I do it. Um, my thing is, um, so like, so like my church, um, so like when we witness the people, a lot of so the older generation, they'll go straight to it. Uh, we, like the youth, like we, I go like, I deal with that one because you don't know what they're going and everything. So you want to take big steps, but also try to like, so that's basically, that's basically how I, um, how I, um, you know, like help, help people. And stuff like that. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because I mean, you, you wanted to mature true school all-stars that, you know, we, we know is a leader amongst their peers where you notice things, you see things, you listen to things. And, you know, that's that awareness of what to do if you do see things, if you do hear things, or if you see something on social media. And, 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 and a lot of times that is the awareness where we understand there may be a problem or we, we understand there may need to be some extra conversations, you know, around issues. Um, and it happens in all families from all different backgrounds. It happens in all families from all different uh, economic spectrums in neighborhoods. And so young people that, you know, are in the situations where they have influence with their peers, we want to, you know, give them tools at True School. The same way we talk about entrepreneurship and offering opportunities for economic growth or economic uh, pathways, that's a peer-to-peer -peer thing as well. Young people being able to tell each other opportunities that may be legal, maybe healthy. So even something like that, where they have an opportunity to develop trust, where they want to help each other with their daily life, with their routine. Like you said, it may start with just asking, how you doing? Something may went wrong, led to certain decisions, coping, et cetera, et cetera. So these tools are important. And so what's next as far as citizen action, as far as this health uh, related needs that you know that everyone's dealing with right now is there a way that um, people can get in touch with you directly through your office supreme um, as you know a lot of unpredictability happens people need all the resources as on deck as possible so if you know of any you can share them with us um, via your office via the action citizen action well, I mean, if individuals want to call County Supervisor Supreme Moore Makunde, the number is uh, 414-278-4265. Um, if they want to call, uh, if they want to call me, uh, or they can send me an email directly at Citizen Action. It's supreme at citizenactionwi.org. Um, they can shoot me an email there and contact me if they want to talk about uh, some of the work that we're doing over at Citizen Action. One of the things that they're doing at Citizen Action right now is we're trying to make sure that everybody can be covered um, uh, healthcare-wise for testing and for care afterwards because we don't want anyone having to run up healthcare costs if they happen to test positive for COVID-19. Um, and uh, we want to make, we're, we're trying different methods of doing that. One way it can be done is if you expand, um, if you expand Medicaid and, and expand Badger Care in the state of Wisconsin and make sure you cover everybody and then make sure that we don't charge any individuals for uh, that, that coverage or, or charge individuals for that care, if that's a method that it can be done. But there's a number of ways in which it's trying to be done. But if you want to shoot me an email, supreme at citizenactionwi.org. Man, that's incredible. And, and citizenactionwi.org is the website. Um, yes. And in general, there is a lot of information on the site and, and specifically in response to this COVID-19 situation. Uh, I think that's really important that, you know, on the ground, people like yourself, man, so important, bro. We appreciate your service. We appreciate what you're doing and the dedication, yo, the sacrifice that it takes. You could be doing anything, 
right? right. And, I, and I know that I know that you grind hard and people pull you in a lot of different directions. Um, and so, so in the future, are, are we going harder? Are we going harder? Are we going, are we going, are we going harder? Are we going to other elected seats? Are we, what's in the future for Supreme? Yes. I'm asking that question right here. <laughs> Right now, I got a lot. I got a lot on my plate, so I'm I'm gonna eat what's on my plate right now. That's what's and, up. Uh, and so, uh, once 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 I, I dig into that a little bit, you can you can hear more uh, more about that at at, uh, at some later time. However, um, did you did you still want me to go through uh, this presentation briefly? Yes, I do actually. Yeah, I do. Okay. So so let me let me uh, let me make sure that um, I have that you can all see what it is that I have. Uh, yes, and so I'm gonna go through all of this because it's, it's you know, all of, some of it is just uh, too much is what I do in person. Mm -hmm. It just talks about some of the things that we talked about. What is expert? Where has it been successful? What's been done? what's being done now, what the free care rule is, um, what my ass typically is, and, and more information. So expert is screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment. I take a world we live in versus the world we want to live in model. If you, if you look at opioid overdoses increasing 600% between 2000 and 2016, the world we live in punishes people for substance use disorder. The world we want to live in recognizes that it's a healthcare problem and not a criminal justice problem. Um, and that we should be approaching it as a healthcare challenge. Um, and then it, it just has all these statistics about, you know, uh, opioid over, overdose. But screening is, expert is screening, brief intervention referral to treatment. It can be conversations between students and trusted adults. And a trusted adult can be a coach, a teacher, whoever that has had some training. Brief intervention are recommendations from those trusted trained, adult, trained adults. We've noticed you've been having some challenges. How can we help you address those? And then if it goes to full-blown substance use disorder, students can receive proper resource to help them address that substance use disorder. Like there may be something outside of the school that we can send you to a, a group of folks that are meeting and having a conversation about something. Um, and maybe that's what we need. I have this video that I won't show. Um, but it talks about how the youth interaction and, and what expert meant to them, um, talking about when they got high for the first time and they wish that someone could have come and intervened with them. So in Massachusetts, it was the first uh, state in the union to implement universal school-based expert for in 2016 for 8th, 9th, and 11th grade students. And they did it universally, meaning that everybody within those grades, and because they, they did it with state funding there. And their legislature makeup allowed for that. And so, you know, they're doing a lot of good work. And that's where actually where Community Catalyst, the funder, is from. It's been implemented in Texas, New York, D.C., and several other states. They were even doing some work um, in some schools in Wisconsin, some colleges, like doing some training about it. Uh, it's been introduced, implemented in school districts in West Dallas, West Milwaukee, Slinger, Hartford, and other school districts here. And we're working on... Um, doing some things at NPS as well. And our funding attempts, like I said, we had a state budget proposal for more than $2 million. And we made some attempts to acquire funding through the state's attorney general office. They had some leftover dollars from the last attorney general um, into the new attorney general, um, who is currently Josh Call. However, those dollars probably were used to plug in some budget holes. And we did a statewide expert tour for Joint Finance Committee's Roadshow that I talked about earlier. and. Right now, we're working with NPS, the NPS school board to develop a leg legislative support. That's something that we talked about before. Um, when we talk about having young people having a peer-to-peer -peer approach and then reaching out to one another. Um, and also, we're working with the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Department of Health Services to unlock the free care rule. Um, the free care rule is... Uh, in 2014, before 2014, states were not allowed to receive Medicaid reimbursements from the federal government, uh, meaning that they couldn't offer free care to people through these Medicaid reimbursements from individuals who were eligible to receive, students who were eligible to receive Medicaid. And so in uh, 2014, the Obama ad administration unlocked the free care rule, which would allow Medicaid reimbursements for students that had um, um, IDPs, et cetera. Um, 
or IEPs rather, in their schools and, and could get, uh, were Medicaid eligible. And we're working with this Wisconsin Department of Health Services to change our state plan to allow us to accept those dollars from the federal government. But we still, it works with that. With COVID-19, their focus is mostly on making people, sure people stay safe and stay healthy. Um, and so we wanted people to be involved. We want to build a continue building this grassroots kind of coalition to support from a local level, and that included young people as well. And we wanted young people to continue telling stories, and we're going to ask them to reach out to their state officials, et cetera, about our proposals, et cetera. Folks have been doing that, but we still want to collect stories. We still want folks to tell their perspective. We still want folks to care about other folks, if that makes sense. We want young people to express how much they care about other young people. I've always found that it's easier to have young people who care about other young people and are willing to vie for them and willing to ride for them, et cetera. So that's another reason why I wanted to get young people involved. And then there's this good webinar about, um, you know, the free care rule or about expert, et cetera, this great webinar. Um, that that they go into, et cetera, and so those those are the things that we've done. Put your info and, back. Uh, up. Put your info back up. Go ahead. Put my info back up. You want to yeah. put my cell number up there? Great. Yeah, yeah that, that's your best. Supreme Moore <laughs> McCurney, the Bright Futures Organizer. That's my cell number. That's the one my mama calls me on. So uh, if you if you call that number, you'll get me, and that's my email. Supreme at citizenactionwi.org. Boom. Now that's awesome. So you want to um, wrap up by, you know, I, I got two wrap up questions for you. Okay. One of them, as we get the screen back, I'll just let people know this episode of True Knowledge will be up on our True School podcast. It will be up on True School TV channel on YouTube. So all of our past Art of Coping episodes, all of our part, our past True Knowledge episodes will be on the YouTube channel, True School TV, and on our True School podcast, which you can find on all platforms, Spotify, Tidal, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure you check for the archive episodes because we've had a lot of great guests and you know in a very short time, and our podcast is pretty deep right now. So um, once again, we appreciate the 10th District Supervisor of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Milwaukee County, Supreme Omakunde, uh, for joining us this week. So. What's your favorite hip hop album out right now? Any artist right now you vibing with? What's what's Supreme? What's he rocking with right now? Man, my favorite album out right now. Wow, it's probably Rhapsody's Eve. Um, that joint is so dope. Mm. I remember when she came to to perform it at at the rave. Um, I just think she's outstanding, and she's just like so hip hop, for lack of a better phrase, and. Um, that's like my favorite album right now. I just go back and forth through it. And then I go through some of her old stuff too. It made me want to go back and listen to some other things. Um, and she's just one of the dopest MCs that I've ever heard. I don't like to pigeonhole women MCs and to just, oh, she's the dopest female rapper I've ever heard before. Cause I think that takes away from their talent and like kind of puts them in a box, but she's just dope. And um, so that's probably like my favorite album right now is that, is that Eve album. Mm. And if people want to know, how did you get the name Supreme? Oh, I got the name Supreme. I chose the name Supreme for myself mm. over 20 years ago when I got knowledge of self. Um, um, and I got the name Supreme because I wanted to remind myself of who I was. Um, anytime, a lot of times people ask me, your name is Supreme. What, does, that, does that mean I'm supposed to bow down to you? And I always tell people, no. Me being supreme has nothing to do with you. Um, I'm being the best that I can be. Um, I'm being um, as great as I can be. And it's a reminder to myself more than anyone else that I am to be the best that I can be. And I'm to always to put my best foot forward and do my best work. And so I chose that name to remind myself of who I was and who, it, who I was to maintain throughout whatever happened. Boom. There you have it. This is only part one of this True Knowledge virtual discussion. You can look it up, Google it yourself, people. Go to the Google world, type in S-B-R-I-T. There's a lot of information that's available. And then you can go to citizenactionwi.org. It's a lot of information available. Connect the dots. Also at T-R-U-E-S-K-O-O-L dot O-R-G. 
and make sure you tune in with us next week for the True Knowledge session. And make sure you tune in Friday, this Friday, every Friday, 1 p.m. Central for the Art of Coping session. We thank everybody for tuning in. We thank everybody for joining us. Supreme, we'll chat soon so we can continue to this ball rolling and uh, do what we got to do while we approach this uh, summer and, and what that looks like to, you know, into the fall and everybody's making this great shift. So whatever we can do to help you all, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, you know, not just what the, so the, what we started, but everybody's shifting. So the needs may shift, right? So let us know. That's in regards to citizen action. And that's just in general. Tell your mama, we love her. Send us, send, send our love to the family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We Thank appreciate you, everybody. Thank you, man. Thank you for tuning in. True Knowledge Wednesday. We signing out. Peace. Peace.